Hey everyone, welcome to another Inside the Birds TV with Adam Kaplan and Jeff Mosher, presented of course by DraftKings Sportsbook. And we're always excited to bring on our guest today because uh, look, we love talking offensive line with him, we love talking Eagles with him, and the cool thing is he loves to talk about it with us. He is a friend <laughs> of the show, former Eagles offensive lineman, played everything except for center, and if you had stuck around long enough, you might have been there anyway, Todd Harriman. What's going on, Todd, father? Not too much, guys. You know, just enjoying a little football. Football's back. It's, uh, it's exciting. Brings some excitement to the air. And uh, fall just seems a lot, a lot right, a lot more right coming right now with uh, football full swing. Yeah, definitely. There seems to be a you know a little. I know it's one and zero, and you know what's what it's like in Philadelphia, Todd. After just one win, there's like a rejuvenated sense, but there's a sense of newness. In fact, on our Inside the Birds platform, Quentin, Michael, and Jason Avant do a show, and they were talking about just seeing the team kind of camaraderie, uh, even way before the season opener, but especially in the season opener, the team kind of playing for each other, which they had felt had been lost uh, over some time since the Super Bowl season. Did you notice that with this team? Yeah, I mean, they. I think any time that you get um... – you know, it was it was very wide open what this season could have been. So there was a lot of question in the air. And I think a lot of times when that's, you know, a team's not written off as crap or or they're going to win the Super Bowl this year, or they're not prede predetermined, then there's an energy in a locker room that can kind of build and, and you know, take you wherever you want to go. And that, I think a lot of times that happens with, like, you know, we have young players, young superstar players in, in like the very in skilled positions right now. And I think that that can kind of create that energy from just, I don't, I don't want to call it, I guess it's just the inexperience of the NFL. You know, they're, they're excited to be out there. They, uh, you know, nobody's expecting them to do a whole lot. So I think that that just creates an awesome chemistry in the locker room. And I, you know, I think we saw it. I mean, dude, after they scored the first touchdown, I think I tweeted something like Eagles by 30 and I wasn't too far off. So. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> after the game, after the game, I was getting ready to tweet something like uh, Super Bowl champs, here we come or something uh -oh. like that. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm yeah, starting to become that, a Philly fan. <laughs> right. Well, you, you don't want to stoke those fires now. But right. going into last week's game, because you talked about not a lot, lot was expected of these receivers. Jeff and I, you know, had our own opinions of what we thought that game would look like, but I never saw a blowout. What were your thoughts coming into the game? And if you adjusted, let's be let's be real here. How good do you think they could be? Well, you know, going into this season, I had a lot of people ask me like what I thought, and I was positive. You know, I, I think they can have the season be whatever they want it to be. Nobody really ever wants to win the NFC East. It seems like so. You know, <laughs> if they can come out go 500 or better. And I think that that's totally doable, you know? And, you know, I, I wasn't expecting them to see like clicking like they were, um, but I was expecting to see, you know, a very close game and possibly a W, you know? So after the game, it was just, it was very refreshing. And, and you're like, okay, this is going to be an exciting season. You know, they came out and lit it up. Um, it's just a lot of fun to watch. I think Sirianni, you know, did a great job this offseason. It hasn't really, you know, pounded his chest or made anybody expect too much out of it. If anything, it's, it's, um, you know, he's, he's kind of, I don't know, maybe turned some of the people off by, by the way he held press conferences or something like that. But he just kind of kept to himself and, and he's keeping his grind and it had a good product in the first game. And I, I think that the players are buying into it and, uh, you know, after a game like that, it's hard for the city not to start buying into it. Yeah, you know, we put out a lot of intel on Inside the Birds over the years, but I'm not sure if any truer words have ever been spoken than <laughs> you saying nobody wants to win the NFC East. And certainly nobody has ever wanted to win it twice in a row. In fact, Todd, you were part of the last team that did win the NFC East two years in a row, and that was 2003-2004 uh, Eagles, and we're all – Grayer, no. a lot older. That's that's a long, long time. That's ago. A, that was right. That was PTE, pre Todd era. Oh, that is PTE. That's a good point. You were you were in in college then. Yeah, right? Saginaw Valley yeah. State. I was grinding away in Saginaw, Michigan. Saginaw, <laughs> Michigan. All right, um, let's talk about Jordan Maialata. He got a big contract. He's a enormous human being, uh, a guy who's still learning his craft. But when you watch him, Todd. 
do you feel like you are seeing a player who will be great or still has got quite a way to go and was paid on potential? Well, I don't think that – I think it's hard to pay people on potential now, and I think we've been bitten a couple times for it. Um, I think what you have to do is come out and prove yourself for at least a season and, and you know, show that – that you can handle this level consistently. Um, and I think that Jordan was able to do that. And, and um, I think the upside is still tremendous. His, his football life is very young still, you know, like he hasn't had a lot of it. He's kept picking up a lot of tricks of the trade in the NFL, um, where a lot of people kind of pick up little nuances and stuff all throughout, you know, earlier years in their life. So, uh, I think from what we've seen out of him, how he's handling himself, what we saw last year, I think this was a great signing and, and solidifies that and makes it a non-worry for, for quite some time. Um, I like his game. You know, I think a lot of it's still off of ability. Um, and he can definitely tighten up technique and stuff, but he seems to have a pretty good grasp of scheme, um, which sometimes comes later. Uh out at the tackle position because a tackle, they just kind of like, Hey, block the end. You know, if you don't know what you're doing on this play, block the end, cancel out one man and you're good. Mm. But he seems to have a pretty good grasp on, on scheme and um, what's trying to be accomplished on each play. Todd, when you look at my you know, he, he's only last year was really his first year, you know, his first two years, he, he didn't play. What was your first season like to your second season? What did you learn from what happened in your first season? Well, um, I think in the first season, you kind of learn the speed of the game. Um, I mean, you see it in training camp and stuff, but you really, there's different speeds, you know, and, and game speed is, is something that's really hard to, to match. So I think that you learn the speed of the game. Um, you also, you know, you either learn that you have confidence that you can do it, or you learn that you don't have confidence that you can do it, you know, and I think that that's, probably something that's uh, not talked about very often because people have to portray themselves as being very confident to even make it to the NFL. But I think there's a lot of players that play in big time schools or, or don't play at all, like in Jordan's situation and comes in this situation and they just really don't know inside whether they can do it or not. And I think that he's gone out there and, and, and found out himself that he can, he can definitely do it, you know, as raw as he was. Uh, after, you know, not playing for a couple of years and, and just picking up football. So I think that those two things are really key and probably not talked about a whole lot is the speed of the game and that he can actually do it. Now it's just about, you know, um, consistency. And I think consistency is going to come from just repetition of your technique, uh, learning the guys that you're playing with, you know, if they can keep a solid unit together and he's playing next to uh, Isaac the whole time, that would be great. Um, and then staying healthy and, you know, the, uh, the consistency with, with technique and then also learning the scheme, you know, so he can improv. If he understands the whole scheme conceptually, he can improv in certain scenarios. And um, down the road, when you get later in the season and in the playoffs and stuff, being able to improv with new looks and stuff that you might not have been presented with throughout the year is, uh, is crucial. All right, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ITB to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game. That's a dollar bet to get $200 in free bets using promo code ITB on DraftKings Sportsbook. Todd, you, you were talking about scheme right there, and I'm curious your thoughts while, while you were watching the game. We all we all know coaches like Andy and, and many coaches these days. The first 15 plays are, are sort of scripted. And you try to stick to that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Adam and I felt watching that game from almost beginning to end. It seemed like everything was so schemed up and everything was was by the book the way they went about it. Did you get that same feel like this was a, a, the, a coaching staff that really had a, a plan from start to finish and was able to push the right buttons each each time along the way? Yeah, I mean, it just seemed very organized to me. Um and a lot of times early in the season, especially last year, I mean, the, with such a dysfunction, the training camp was or non-existent or whatever, you know, I think that last year's football seemed very unorganized. Um, and it just seemed um, that this game had all the pieces in place. Uh, and then I think a lot of times there's a challenge 
as the game's going along to stick to what you game planned. You know, I mean, there has to be a little bit of flexibility in your game plan, but you know, you studied this for weeks and you have these plays for a reason. A lot of times uh, coaches can clam up and just go to like, you know, uh, the main screen. I guess I, I used to play uh, <laughs> Tech Mobile and like, you know, that first <laughs> screen that always popped up, I would like clam up and I would just pick a play off of the first screen. And so usually it was the same play. Yeah, Bo Jackson. Like, <laughs> I feel like that can happen to coaches sometimes. Like the heat of the moment, the emotion, everything just gets to them and they just freeze up and call like a pretty basic play. And I don't think that that happened to him. And I think that that's a crucial, a crucial statement because he's a young coach. And I think a lot of times as a young coach, you can kind of get scared and back down and, and do what's comfortable for you. And, and he stuck to his game plan and I thought it worked out very well. Todd, what does winning week one, no matter whether it's home or away, what, what does it mean to a football team? Could you bring us back kind of like when, if you could recall winning in week one and does it, how much does it really mean? Cause remember now we're not 16 games anymore. We're 17 games longer right. season. Right. Uh, week one, you know, ask, <laughs> you'll ask the teams that won week one and it's everything. It means everything. And you ask the teams that lose week one and it means nothing, but I mean, it is a long season, but the goal is to win every game, win the Super Bowl. You know, when you start the season, you want to be that undefeated team, and half of the teams aren't now. So after that first game, you win or you lose, you're either on the right path or you have to redirect and start climbing back uphill. And, you know, I always think that momentum is probably more important at the end of the season, uh, going into the playoffs, having things clicking, but it never hurts to to get a nice cushion, a, a, a few wins right away so that you're not chasing the rest of the season. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the personality of a team, though, because, you know, you don't want people hanging around either. You got to have a step on the throat type mentality. So we'll see. It's going to be exciting. Todd, the way the offensive line played in the season opener and imagining that they're going to be healthy, uh, they should be pretty good. Do you feel like opposing teams are going to have to kind of pressure them more uh, blitz a little bit more, which then would leave some one-on-one situations for Jalen hurts and his receivers as this season goes on. And because it looked a little easy, uh, not taking anything away from Jalen. I just meant he was able to do what he wanted to do with the football, no turnover, 75% completion rate. doesn't go like that every single week in the NFL. Do you think the opponents will try to force the issue a little bit more? Well, I think that you're going to probably see a lot of different things tried against him. Um, I think you're going to see pressure come at him and see if he can make quick decisions or make the right reads right away. Um, also, it's going to make the offensive line uh, communicate more, uh, especially on the road. Uh, I could see teams bringing a lot of heat, trying to screw up the communication amongst the crowd noise and stuff like that. Um, that could be a factor. But, you know, having Kelsey in there uh, generally – Kelsey's one of the better communicators I've ever played with. So I see that as being a strength for this team. Um, and, you know, Kelsey, after seeing him last week, he's he looks like he's playing as well as he ever has. So I text him. I told him he's got another five or six years in him. And he just kind of <laughs> laughed at me. <laughs> um, no, I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of different things. Um, one thing I don't think you're going to see is, is probably a whole lot of man. Um, with his ability to run, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. You don't want to keep your eyes on him and, and keep stuff in front of you. You don't want your corners turning and running downfield with their back to him a whole lot. He's just got that ability. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really was impressed by him. He seemed to have quite a bit of pocket presence. His escapability was great too. And, uh, just the, the ability to keep his eyes downfield while he was running around, I think was, uh, was very noticeable as well. So, uh, I was very impressed by by Hertz, and you know it's exciting to watch uh, a young player like that develop with these young receivers. So, Todd, you mentioned you know the crowd noise and all that. What, what will this home for this home opener mean? Because remember, we didn't have full we didn't have a full house last year with the Eagles. What do you think this will mean to the players, and and how could that bring them up for this game, being it is their home opener? Oh, I think it's going to be amazing. I don't think anybody. You know, you kind of forget how loud a crowd can be uh, and how, how you know, <laughs> crazy a crowd can be. Hmm. So 
if this is going to benefit anybody, it's going to benefit the Eagles. You know, San Fran's got a long trip. They're coming out here uh, into a rowdy environment they haven't seen in, you know, over a, two years, basically. Um, and I think that it's just going to benefit. You know, if the fans bring it, which I know that they usually do, uh, it's going to be a tough place to play on Sunday. No doubt about it. All right. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit more about the, the offensive line, Todd. One one player in particular. First, remind everybody to download the Deal Dash app or go to DealDash.com. When you register, enter the promo code ITB for a special offer for bonus free bids. That's ITB at DealDash.com or the Deal Dash app. You know, I got to thinking uh, just before we all came on that, you know, you played on some pretty good offensive lines. And at one point, you played on an offensive line with Trey Thomas, John Runyon, and Sean Andrews, and all of them went to the Pro Bowl. And you're a pretty good player in your own right. And I couldn't help but think of the perhaps a parallel with Isaac Samalu, who's been a really nice left guard for the Eagles, but he's playing among all these all-pro guys and Pro Bowl guys and doesn't get a whole lot of recognition, played well against the Falcons. But they also had, he also has this kind of specter of Landon Dickerson, the, the second-round pick who should have been a first-round pick without injuries, and it's kind of hovering over – could you empathize with this guy? I mean, do you feel for him a little bit? And do you kind of yourself wonder how quickly the Eagles will try to get Landon Dickerson on the field um, just because now that he's healthy? Yeah, I mean, you know, stuff's always revolving in there and, and you're always bringing in better players to try to push you and stuff like that. So I can emphasize with him, um, you know. I don't, I don't know exactly what to tell him in this situation. You know, just keep playing. He's playing well. They obviously like him. You know, I don't know if what the plan is. I, I hear that they like him at center. I hear he's really smart. Um, you know, if if it gets to the point where they replace him, and you know, what does what what Isaac have left on a contract? Did he just sign something? He or signed is... an extension a few years ago, so he's yeah, and he restructured right now. Yeah, yeah, and he's and then he restructured, right? Yeah, his money is really favorable for the club. Um, yeah, but again, if, if here's the question, right, Todd? So, if Kelsey wants to come back, how how do you not how do you, if he plays at this how do you tell him no? level, How <laughs> yeah. do you not want him back? Right? Uh, I don't know. He, tough call. That's, I would that's, think. A, that's a very tough call. You know, I think. Kelsey more than likely is going to be in the Eagles Hall of Fame eventually, oh, yeah. you know, Hell yeah. uh, in the in the Philadelphia city of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. And, <laughs> That's right. you know, Might be in the Mummers Hall of Fame too. Yeah. <laughs> right. We don't have to start racking up his accolades, but that's, you know, that's tough, but I don't see Kelsey's not the type of guy that's going to hang around if he doesn't have the ability to contribute. Like, he's just not. He's not going to sit around as, as a half wash player and collect money that he doesn't feel like he deserves. That's not his personality. Um He's going to, when he doesn't feel like he can produce it, his as better than his backup, he'll shut it down. I, I truly feel that about Kelsey, but, you know, that doesn't seem to be coming anytime soon from what we saw. Did, did you ever feel like in a position, I'm trying to remember, I don't, the year that the, the Eagles signed Stacey Andrews, right? He was supposed to play yeah. right guard. They want, was that when they wanted to move? Sean to right tackle. They wanted those two guys on the right side of the line, correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah that's you were playing happened. left guard, though, right? You, you're, it's not like that was a yep. job threatening move for you, correct? Correct. I mean, the, I think the one thing that kind of hit me as job threatening was when Juan told me in the offseason they were moving me to left guard to play left guard, and they drafted Max Jean Gillis like two weeks later, and then I was oh, kind of yeah. like, dude, what? I'm not even. <laughs> 320 pounds right now like what do you think you know um but then you know you just kind of it all shakes out and max is a great player and a, and a great teammate and so was nick cole and you know they both found ways to get onto the field and we had like a, a cool rotation and i don't know if, if they really liked it as much as they want as as i liked it because i think i stayed on the field more but hmm. um you know People are always coming in, um, and I think that that's a sign of a good offensive line is that you're constantly challenging your starters, and um, you don't want to hit any of those low moments where you have a weak spot. I think this is one way to do it. You know, you you weren't pushing 320 yet, and I think Max at the time they drafted him was probably pushing 420. So that's, that was a big uh, right. And a you got you got to 
you got to remember, I'm sitting in the meeting room with with Juan my entire rookie year, listening to him like put up quotes like "mass kicks ass" and, <laughs> and like you know, <laughs> just like he wants big guys that could just move people. And so like they drafted Max, and I was like, oh, I'm so out of here. I'm gonna be a swing tackle the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> mm. You, oh, so let's turn our attention, Todd, to this matchup. As we said, Eagles home opener. Niners came, although they've actually been out east. Um, they were at Detroit. I think they're staying. Jeff, where's it? West Virginia? Somewhere, somewhere out east. So, yeah. I know they're, they're definitely West out Virginia, here. But, I think. Right. But this is a team that did win, and they should. They were up by 28 points at one point in the game. So, Todd, what's your concern level for this game against the Niners coming here to Philly? Concern level? I mean <laughs> – I don't what do you know. think they're gonna blow uh, them out? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm I'm riding high after last week. You know, I'm excited to see him get out there. I, I I do think you know that the 49ers are probably a, a little better squad than the Falcons, um, but it's a long trip, and you know they're staying in West Virginia and they're traveling to Philly, and I don't know, dude. There's a lot of components there, and we got some momentum right now. You know, eighty thousand screaming crazies and in, in the link. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not too concerned. I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I think that we're going to get a W. Uh, I'll wait until I see how our first drive goes and then make my prediction. <laughs> oh, then you put it on Twitter <laughs> okay. before you tweet something? Yeah. That's yeah. Funny. Now that I think of it, is there any I – I don't think and, – did Andy ever have you guys stay anywhere odd in back-to-back -back road weeks that were far from Philly? Like somewhere out west? Oh, I don't think so. I think – they might have done that with Chip one year. Yeah, I think they did. Where they stayed out there for like an entire week between yeah. games or something like that. In 17, right. they did. Remember, the Eagles were out there out west for a bit. Yeah, Jeff, they did right? that under Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they yeah. Stayed out there too. Oh, that was under Doug? Okay. Yeah. Who yep. stays in West Virginia, though? I, I, that one is no. – that's mind-boggling. Is that just the halfway point between where they were in Detroit and Philly? Like, what, they didn't want to come all the way? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I've never heard they, of this. <laughs> They actually did that when uh, Jim Harbaugh was a coach. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. Yeah, you're right. It's like, why why there? Yeah, I don't know. Very I don't know. <laughs> Scenery. <laughs> what did you think, Todd, before we leave you on this? I know you're an offensive guy, but um, about the, the way that Jonathan Gannon's defense looked, a lot of zone, front four rush. I mean, obviously last year they played a ton of man, and you had games where – against San Francisco, George Kittle catches 15 passes on 15 targets. I don't I don't think we're ever going to let that go. Adam and I have talked about that in every single show we've done for about two weeks now, that George Kittle was actually targeted 15 times last year and caught all 15 passes. Uh, you're, you're never going to see that again in an NFL game. I'm positive. Darren Waller might it. do it, though. Waller's getting 15 close. For 15. I can see him being targeted 15 times and catching 11, 12, or 20 times. Right, right. 15 for 15 is, is almost crazy. unheard of for a tight yeah. end, or for anybody. But what did you think of the right. defense against Atlanta and, and what they showed? You know, I thought they looked well. I, uh, I thought they looked good. I thought that, you know, Atlanta's offense is a little depleted. Um, after losing Julio, that's – that's a big hit to your offense. You, you've had him for so many years. Uh, it's kind of hard to know what to expect after that. But, um, you know, I thought I thought it was safe. I thought that they got the job done, you know. Um, the front the front four, I thought, look, played really well and, and were able to generate pressure. And, and you know, I, I have no complaints. You know, when we went big, it's hard for me to complain. It was always that way when I played, too. Right. Do, do you think zone is best for this personnel? Because we've seen them try to play man for a couple of years now and, and they've, you know, be, beaten over the top or just given up individual matchups. I mean, does it feel like zone for, for this team and this scheme is, is the way to go most of the time? I mean, it, it's really hard to say. I think it depends on, on your opponent a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I know that this personnel is similar to what we had last year, but but there are some some different figures out there, which, you know, it, it'd be good to see. It'd be good to see a good balance and not be predictable on defense, you know what I mean, and be able to hide some stuff and, and move the guys around. Um, but, I, you know, I think they played well playing zone, and I think that that could be a, a good base defense, you know, but we, we definitely have to be able to show a little bit of everything. All right, Jeff, Todd's a, confident, man. He's he confident, is. I can see it. I can feel yeah. it. All the, you know, Q was confident, Jason Avonska, all the former guys, Eagles there, there took one win. They're, they're, they're on the train now. We'll, guys, it's uh, we'll so much more fun. 
It's so much more fun from this side. It's easy to be a lot more confident, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. That is the Todd father, Todd Harriman's former Eagles offensive lineman. As always, we thank him for stopping by ITV TV to uh, bless us with his information and his stories of playing back in the day. Thanks to our friends at Deal Dash, at DraftKings, and of course, make sure you see our friends at Sky Motor Cars in Westchester, PA, skymotorcars.com, giving out the best deals if you're buying or trading in a vehicle for Adam Kaplan and Todd Harriman's. I'm Jeff Mosher. You've been watching Inside the Birds TV.